We're back with the breakfast and Okpunabong Kataria uh, joins us this morning for Off the Press, Okpunabong Kataria. It's good to have you join us. Probably was just looking for a happy something to wish you, but let's say a happy Monday and <laughs> happy election week. <laughs> good morning. Yes, please. Uh, thank you for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, we'll start off with the punch now. The headlines are quite interesting. Governors give Malami Emefili Tuesday ultimatum to obey Supreme Court. Let's see how that pans out. That's tomorrow. Uh, failure to comply will lead to contempt and charge on Tuesday. Zamfara AGF Attorney General Skota to say. Now, Rivers Kogi Ondo Ekiti ACF uh, Mbaka Knox Buhari as CBN faces fresh suits. Old Nile rejection spread. Report says the 20 trillion Nile lost to CBN cash mop up really i mean there's a lot of uh struggles going on but i can't wait to share the thoughts of uh Nkotaria on this one beavers reset ends today INEC promises result transmission let's see how that goes no going back on nationwide protests the labor party is saying uh, there's some trend that you would see on social media occupy INEC before it used to be occupy nigeria now <laughs> Defense headquarters boom as Nigeria drops in global military ranking. Uh, we'll look at that. Uh, Adamu's fate, NAS leadership, top agenda, Senate elect meets Tunubu. Uh, it's a point where a lot of people are lobbying. You know, we, we have done the job, we have to get it. Angus gunmen killed 35 in Katsina and Kaduna, so it feels like uh, the attacks have returned shortly after the elections. My daughter preparing for masters in the United Kingdom before train crash. I saw that unfortunate you know, incident that happened. Uh, there's, there's also a pictorial representation of the core member that died in that uh, train crash that happened in Ikeja. Really, really sad. Really sad. Really sad. Uh, huh. You don't even want to talk about it. To hear that they, the passengers were saying that they were trying to stop. The, we have to move quickly because of our, our time. Um, so I just quickly take this now. Sat lecturer, Senate threatened to stop UI funding. That's it this morning on the Punch newspaper. I think we'll just take one paper and then we'll go over to our guests. Uh, you know, um, I, we just sometimes I, I I laugh. You know, I, I get to uh, derive some comic relief from some from some of the headlines and where things are going in the country. The nation has these headlines. They may feel a launches fresh plot uh, against President Elect Tinubu. Uh, CBN boss conspires with uh, uh, Jen on Lagos polls. Those are 500 million Naira new notes to Labour Party's campaign. Um, governors take tough stance on Naira scarcity. Mm. And uh, foreign portfolio investments post gain in five years. Businesses adopt new tactics to stay afloat uh, of cash crisis. Uh, this is a sad one, of course, um, but still good news. Peter Sweet, 53 train and bus accidents out of hospitals. Um, and then 31, 35 killed in Kaduna Katsina taxi. We'll look at other papers as we go on, but because of time, we'll quickly bring in our guest. Uh, Punabo and Kotara, good morning to you once again. Let's start off with a story mm -hmm. on the front page of the Nation newspaper. The Nation, of course, um, uh, we know where they stand. They're saying that Emefile, the CBN governor, is uh, launching a fresh plot against President elect Tinbu. He says that. Um, uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria's governor, Mayfield, is playing his last card, in quote, uh, in the closing chapter of the high-stake power play that has embroiled Nigeria in the past six months. The paper says the CBN boss who has disobeyed the Supreme Court judgment uh, that the old 500 and 1,000 notes remain legal tender until December 31 is determined to influence the outcome of the March 18 governorship election in Lagos State against the ruling APC is what um, the nation is saying. So you can you can mix that up with um, the punch that says, Governors give Malami a Mayfield Tuesday ultimatum to obey Supreme Court. Ms. Senkotara. Yes, Kony, um, Matthew, Nigeria, good morning once more. Good morning. I don't think we should dissipate energy on gibberish, such as uh, the Central Bank and the uh, Labour Party and the president elect. I don't think we can waste our time on that. The point belongs to Tilipo, so they will come up with all kinds of rubbish, making the man feel so important and so. Well, let's go for the Supreme Court judgment on that. Okay. Let's go to uh, the issue of the governors and the CBN governor. 
on the Naira notes in currency. Because you know, if you remember, because you're a Christian, mercy. If you remember in the Bible, I've forgotten exactly who. When God said, Well, no, no. the people asked for a king. And eventually, when God gave them a king, that is God him. The son said, My father built you with wits. I will plug you with scorpions and so on. And that is what we are facing in this country. I know when I say this, you tell me, no, 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 I'm not going to tell you on this, but I will say it. For any Nigerian who dies as a result of this cash crunch, senseless, callous cash crunch, that blood is on the head of Mr. President. Because so many have died in the hospitals, not because they don't have money, they don't have access to their own money. What is going on is not Naira's work, it is Naira confiscation. We have a president that has a pension for disregarding court orders. In his, one of his um, meeting broadcasts, if you remember, I think that has to do with Colonel Dasuki. He said, why, that was when he was admitted to bail, that's why he was admitted to bail. He said, they should, the DSS should continue to detain Dasuki. Why would the court, knowing too well that Dasuki is guilty, which means he has already pronounced him guilty, that Dasuki is guilty, why would the court go ahead to admit him to bail? That was the kind of president there. And he lamented that I regret this is not a military regime where I would have just jailed him. That was what the president said. So, you don't expect him to do otherwise. This was the same man who came on telly when Nigeria, after the wailing, the howling. He said, okay, the 200 naira should remain a legal tender. Why is he not interested in making a statement on the Supreme Court judgment? We live in a country where I can say the rule of law is changed and administration of justice and this of battle. If the governors like, they can go to court one million times. What are they going to do? Consent? We have to go back to the unity clause in the Constitution. We have to. There has to be an addendum where it is said that once the Supreme Court, the, or the Supreme Court made a just the pronouncement, this is a judgment on an issue. And a sitting president, because that is the highest court, I'm not talking of the high court, I'm not talking of the court of appeal, I'm talking of the Supreme Court. And any president disobeys that judgment, that should be an impeachable offense. It is only at that point that I think our president will sit up and start to respect the rule of law. Because they will be known they have the immunity and there is nothing. Even if you protest, they will roll out the tax. Look at the answers. They will roll out the tax. And we are headed slowly, but standing for a rendezvous. And again, I said it every day. And it's becoming clearer, more apparent by the day. You have money, you cannot access it. You go to the PS, PS has no forms. You go to uh, ATF, forget those ones. They are almost turning to what uh, the way our hospitals turn to. Uh, how, how the, uh, what is that in the prescription centers? Nothing. You go to the bank, you can't even get your money. What level of frustration is this? There is bewildering the frustration and corrective bitterness in the land. People are dying. The men are gradually becoming, I don't want to say something before mercy will not attack me. But this was what God said in the, in the Bible. The men are gradually becoming the women in the house. What do I mean by that? They can no longer live up to their responsibilities. So as even as a father, it, as you wake up in the morning, you're scared to see your children. You have the money in the bank to provide the food is a problem. 
Talking of fruits is ruled out unless you go to the supermarket. Because the woman of the they don't even accept transfers. If you transfer, it could take two weeks. So what are we talking about? And you have a man that is impervious to the, the pains of Nigerians. Some says because it's about living. I say no. Because from day one, this was how it started. So if the governments are going to cut it just for the records, but what will happen? What happened when they the admitted the uh, uh, Kanu to be? In Kutaria. If you uh, not feel in detention. In Kutaria, we, we have other papers this morning. Let's quickly delve into that, but I'd, I'd like to. It feels like this morning you probably had a great time in church yesterday and uh, you seem to be in the that. scripture. Uh, reminding you of the, you know, the scripture that you were making reference to, or the king at the time, Rehoboam, uh, who would treat, you know, the other people uh, with scorpion and whatever, what have you, uh, based on your analogy there. But quickly, I, I want us to look at the ranking of the nations of the world based on. I really think that, but it's okay. No, you you remember you made uh, reference to. A statement in the Bible about the king who said he was going to treat you know the people differently from what the father yes, had treated yes. and I said it was Rehoboam okay thank you thank you yes please now so let's get to the punch uh, the punch talks about the ranking of nations of the world based on current available power and looking at that ranking the final global firepower ranking uh, you know they looked at several factors uh, 60 individual factors to determine a given nation's power index score. Uh, categories ranging from the number of military units and financial standing on logistic capability and geography, among others. Now, Nigeria, uh, in that uh, ranking, dropped one place in the global military ranking. But, uh, that's in 2023. Nigeria military was ranked 36 out of 143 countries reviewed for 2023 now prior to this time uh, we had been rated armed forces of nigeria 35 out of 143 countries what are your thoughts exactly uh, when you juxtapose that you know with uh, the factors that i had mentioned and also looking at the fact that egypt is number one you know in africa is this telephone i love i love i love the zoom a lot of discussion. Just summarize the question, please. So my, my thoughts is, what, are you, what do you make of uh, the latest ranking of the military? Uh, we're ranked 36 out of 145 countries in terms of five power. In Kotaria, can you hear me? You are not. Okay, so I'm sure that there's some disconnection somewhere. I'm asking that we look at the ranking, the latest global ranking that puts Nigeria 36 out of a total of 145 countries. Now, in Africa, you have Egypt topping the charts. We're looking at countries in terms of, you know, how many military units. There are 60 individual factors that, you know, were used to arrive at this result. And so in terms of uh, military units, financial standing, logistics, and what have you, uh, firepower really and nigeria didn't even get close i mean in africa we're not topping the chart you have egypt now number one on the list you have the united states followed by russia you have china uh and then you you know you have other countries so my question is what do you make of this rating you know, you know. exactly i'm a little bit confused because it's a portmanteau of issues our soldiers are good no doubt about that because when you send them out they perform they they, 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 they perform very well credibly you send them out but i must tell you the truth you still boil down to the leadership we would have probably been in africa maybe the first five in africa then you consider the huge amount of resources allocated to the military but i'll use the likes of buratai as a very good example where so much was given to them and there was little or nothing to show for it. It is not of Nabo saying it. The National Security Advisor said so. Their successors said so. So it is not just of Nabo that is saying it. And what happened? They are rewarded with ambassadorial appointments. 
In other words, Graf has been led the life by Buari in the military. Because he appoints the service chiefs, he appointed them as ambassadors, notwithstanding the report by the NSA, notwithstanding the report by the service chiefs. And that is what has led to the morale, low morale. It has led to low, low morale in the military. So you don't, it, 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 otherwise, ordinarily, when you train the soldiers or when, when they are undergoing their training and eventually they pass out, you find out that they are in high spirit. They are vivacious. They are willing to work. But that spirit is dampened. Because when you are there, you are sent to the war front. And you look at your boss. You are going to die. Your boss is in the office. You are hardly paid your allowances. But your boss is building mansions. Your boss is driving a Rolls Royce. What do you expect the man to do? He will also want to get his own. We also had a situation where somebody explained that on his way to wherever they, they, they held his uh, relative in captive, their doctor, that on his way, he met how many things? And the, this one was say, give me my own. Don't worry, by the time you get your destination, they will understand. Tell them we keep it. But that was in soldiers, army, and so on. And, and police, and so on. Because they are not being remunerated properly. Most of them complain. And what, if you, you also live in a country where when you die in service, that is the end of you. Nobody tells you. In fact, when you are even in service, nobody tells you. Is it when you die? Even the the appeal, uh, uh, even their what gratuities and so on are paid ten years after. Within that period, how do you expect the family, the, the widow or widower and the kids to survive? Otherwise, uh, it, ordinarily, our military should be one of the best in the world. Because when you send them out on all these missions, UN mission, whatever mission, you find out that they come almost tops, super tops, including the police. But Mr. President has endorsed corruption in the movement. And I can say it any day, any time, because this is a man, the NSA said to him, uh, the service chief, like Burakai and Co, did not judiciously use the money. In fact, there is nothing to show that such amount was allocated to the, to the, to the uh, defense ministry. He said nothing. The service chiefs, their successors came about to say, there is nothing on ground to show that such an amount has been released to our bosses. Nothing. Rather, they were rewarded with a particular appointment. Is that not a just corruption? And that is where we are. Where, otherwise, our military would have been the first five. In Africa, it would have been probably the first three. And in the world, the first ten. Well, but that, that is the problem that we have with the So, so do you think that is a true reflection of the military, Nigeria's military strength? What do you think that the true reflection? I don't know the strength of the other, I don't know the strength of the military of other countries, except United States, Russia, China, and all those things. I don't really know. So I can't tell what the strength But I know South Africa is better than us. No, Pakistan made, it, Pakistan made it to that list, uh, you know, of uh, the countries, if you look at it in terms of power. Uh, Egypt made it tops, I mean, number one uh, ranking for Africa, 14th in the world. Algeria came second, 26th in the world. South Africa is ranked 23rd, I, be, I beg your pardon, 33rd in the world to emerge third on the continent. And so... I Uh, uh, the point I made yeah. in Anjali, the point I made in Anjali, our ability would have been one of the best in the world, best for corruption. That's the point I made. Okay, Opera Bungutara, we, we, have to, we have to go. Um, some years ago, we will hear military and corruption in the same sentence. Uh, but if you're saying that, we can now mention them in the same, some same sentence. And I think that is a, it gives a lot to worry about. Uh, Mr. Kutara, finally, finally, uh, if you remember, uh, it, it, on the 24th of January, January, we're all reading in the papers uh, how Mr. President Mahon Buhari had set up a, a committee I think should be a 14-man committee headed by himself, with the um, the uh, ad hoc chairman being the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, 
uh, meant to look into the petrol scarcity. I was really biting hard at the time. It's still there. It's not gone away, but it's not as um, as bad as it was. It was then. Someone would say, "14 member committee." Well, the uh, Daily Trust has this uh, headline on its front page. Uh, 48 days after Buhari's committee fails to end petrol scarcity. Uh, the rider to that subsidy gulped 2.4 trillion naira in six months. Motorists buy at 300 naira per liter in Kaduna, others. And the last one says presidency mum. What are your thoughts on this? Do um, you think the uh, paper has gotten it right? So I, I, I wonder why Nigerians still have faith in the president. The man is just an embodiment of contradictions. Full of high blood pressure of deserted veterans and an enemy of concrete, concrete performance. Why, why are they even setting up committees? It's just, a, it's just to delude Nigerians. It's, it's a Fabian policy. They know what they are doing. What is happening to the oil sector? It's still corruption. Was this not the person he said he was going to address? He asked just about two months ago. What has he addressed? It has even first that. What do you think the president was going to do? Because he knows the cabal. In fact, the government is working with the cabal. The minister for the minister for state once alluded to that. That certain persons in government. So what are we talking about? If you can know that certain persons are portraying the effort of the government, what have you done? To stop it. So they also make a lot of money from it and deceive Nigerians with committees and so on. That, I call that a, a Fabian policy. Set of it just to tie the position. Let us pretend to the world that we are working. Meanwhile, you are not doing anything. That is what is going on. I don't know why any Nigerian in his right senses will be. Look at even INEC. The last election, what happened? You have a president who frequently. Disobeyed the electoral act by showing, he was campaigning and showing Nigeria the person he voted for. Is that the kind of person you want to trust? The electoral has he signed into law? Is that not campaigning? Because he has immunity. And you want to believe such a man? What committee? What are you expecting from a committee that is just set up to deceive Nigeria? I don't, I don't know why, even at this point, people cannot understand the kind of president he has. I don't know. So we, if anybody believes that anything good shall yeah, come out Mr. of that Gotaria, then you're, it, you're, 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 you're living in self-delusion. Yeah, Mr. Kotari, if you can hear me, it, it very f finally, because we're out of time, just in a sentence or two, um, it could be argued that uh, petrol scarcity has, has reduced. Well, what I can hear is petrol scarcity has reduced. That's all I heard. Yeah, so yeah. should I comment on that? <laughs> well, maybe the committee has had some impact. You know, it's not as bad as it used to be. At least in that part of the country. No, no, no. Committee did nothing. Before you set up this committee, in all the poor crisis, we are the nation of any committee that has done this. Poor crisis. Do you know the cost of a litre of petrol in this country? All right. Uh, uh, but I'm going to tell you, 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 <laughs> you have to go. We have to go. So, thank so, you. Yeah, exactly. And is this selling for the price it's sold for before we had the price? We have to go, Kunabo. Thank you so much for your time. Um, you, 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 <laughs> well, well, you, 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 you've said it all. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, we've enjoyed well, analysis today. <laughs> well, well, you, you, it's obviously, you obviously not to buy in any of the things that the president says he's doing to make things well, better. Well, well, anyway, well, well, it's all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> we appreciate your time. And uh, we we'll look forward to having you again next week, um, uh, same time. Have a wonderful week, uh, Miss Senkotara. You see, for me to Utah. All right, <laughs> Messi. It's um, it's a uh, situation. You know, uh, sometimes when you listen to some programs, you know, maybe when we're on, we're doing some programs, you're talking about something else, and you say people should send in messages as contribution. They will send a message about Naira and petrol scarcity has nothing to do because people are going through a lot. Yeah, because that's, anyway. you know, that's uh, very apt and it's what people are going through, the current challenges. Absolutely. I mean, really, um, I'm just, uh, you know, taken aback with all of this. It feels like you, we have a government who is not even listening, paying attention. Well, and, well, uh, well the, 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 the scarcity is not as bad as it was in January. So we might, 
it could be argued that President Buhari's committee is, is achieving something. When you say it's not, um, when, when you say it's not, at, at a point, you could, you could, you know, at a point, you could drive into the petrol stations and buy. Buy petrol. Yeah, then but it can you get, to relapse. But can you, you know, no, so see, relapse, coffee, uh, you know, the conversation, I mean, if we want to, we, we get into this now. Time. I know we don't have time. time. Don't forget that prior to the Supreme Court ruling, the president had said that 200 naira note can be valid. You don't even have no, the 200 naira note petrol, available. Petrol. Uh, we need to go with that. <laughs> <All right, laughs> That's right. it. We need to go. When we return, of course, we'll be looking at our first major conversation right here. And of course, um, we'll be right back. Please stay with us.